Buck. Resuming debate. Let up the deputy to Pitt. The honorable member for Pitt Meadows, Maple Ridge. As a country, French and English are foundational to our nation. It's in our DNA, and we don't want to lose it. There is a decline in French spoken at home, where I'm from in British Columbia, and actually throughout this country. The French language and French Canadian culture are part of who we are, our tradition and our heritage. I live in Maple Ridge, right across from us, from where I live, is, is Fort Langley. And that was where the first capital in British Columbia was uh, situated. And the French Canadian coureur de bois, voyageurs, were, found, were very much a part of that. Maillardville in Coquitlam is the French francophone hub in the Vancouver area of francophone cu uh, culture. Every year, thousands come to the annual Festival du Bois, which highlights French-Canadian music, dance, art, and tradition. I'm glad, Mr. Speaker, that there are hundreds of thousands of students, current and those who have gone through French immersion programs in British Columbia. It speaks volumes to the interest in the language among the non-Francophone population. Francophone minorities in my province of British Columbia, as well as across Canada, have been calling for the modernization of the law on official languages for many years. My mother put a lot of effort to try and encourage me, force me, uh, to learn French, putting me in families, having lists of verbs to, uh, for me to learn, and uh, I didn't really apply myself very well. But uh, it was after I graduated from high school and I started traveling, and I realized, you know, there's real value in this, in learning other languages and communications. And so I went on to, to uh, take courses in university to study it. And I'm very appreciative of my mother, her effort that she made, it's enriched my life. As a country, I believe that there's great merit in strengthening the bilingual nature of our country. Monsieur le Président, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to rise to speak today to Bill C-13, the Official Languages Legislation. I've had the pleasure of uh, attending the Official Languages Committee two or three times with interruptions, and over the course of my participation, we had the opportunity to hear evidence from many individuals and organizations who shared their expertise, their viewpoints on official languages in minority communities from coast to coast to coast. One thing was clear and unanimous, and that is there's a need to modernize the Official Languages Act and to halt the decline of French in minority settings across this country. I'd like to speak for a minute or two about my Francophone roots and my family descent or my family lineage. This is an example of what's been happening with hundreds of thousands of French Canadians in Western Canada who have their roots in Quebec. My grandfather was Léopard Baudouin, he married my grandmother, Alice, in the 1920s. Back then, Quebec families had a lot of kids. My grandparents had 18 children. And like the majority of people, perhaps, my grandfather was a farmer. At the time, Quebec's population was growing. There was less and less land available to support those big families and produce enough food for them. So they decided to move to Opastica, which is near Capuscasing, Ontario. As we all know, there's a large French-speaking community in northern Ontario. My mother was born there. But after 10 years, they decided to start their lives over again as farmers in the Peace River region in northern Alberta, 
like many small French-speaking communities established uh, in that area, like Fowler, Girouville, St. Paul, Bonneville, Moranville, St. Albert, and Leduc. My father is Métis. He came from Joussard before joining the Canadian forces. And when we visited those communities as a family, everyone spoke French there. Now what is the situation? French is still spoken in these places, but there are fewer people, fewer French speakers. Farms have gotten a lot bigger because of advances in farming technology. And families have far fewer children, and a lot of those kids, when they grow up, they move to cities like Edmonton, Calgary, and elsewhere. And it's a similar situation in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, and the other provinces. Francophones are proud of their heritage, of our culture, and of our language. We want those things to be preserved, not like something in a museum, but as something vibrant and living. It's a huge challenge. We're surrounded by a sea of Anglophones. Almost all communications and business is conducted in English. It's similar to the situation of all immigrants who want to preserve their heritage, their culture, their language, and at the same time speak the language of the majority, whether it's English or French in Quebec. The difference is that French and English are the official languages of this country. It's a part of our heritage, our history, as a country. And speaking of heritage, I'm a bit disappointed with the Liberal government. I don't think they show much appreciation for our heritage. One example is the new passport they're introducing. The photo of the Vimy Monument is being gotten rid of. And let's not forget that Vimy Ridge was where thousands of Canadians were killed during World War I. It was a founding battle for Canada as a nation. Also being done away with are the images of Terry Fox, who was Métis and a Canadian hero known around the world. I wonder if in their race toward wokeism, they're rejecting traditions and the history of this country. I'm not sure the Liberals are that dedicated to protecting and making the French language thrive. I say that with all due respect, and I'm not accusing all Liberals of this, but over the past eight years, the Liberal government has talked about modernizing the Official Languages Act to better advance bilingualism in Canada. They promised it when they first took office. And it was still a part of their, it was one of their uh, election, the planks of their platform in 2019 and 2021. In 2021, Bill C-32 was, uh, was supposed to be tabled, but what happened? The Liberals decided to call an unnecessary election during the pandemic. And that caused the bill to die on the order paper, and it had to be started all over again. And then what happened? What's happening now? The Liberal government has just uh, added a dozen amendments to their bill. Why didn't they do that when the bill was before committee? Th it's just slowing down the whole process. But that's what they did. Well, let's look at what they did at, at committee, too. They presented 50 amendments. 50. The amendments are not substantive. They could, the ones before us here today, and this easily could have been done at committee, but the Liberals decided once again to waste time, to cause us to waste time. I have to ask, do they really want this passed? The Minister for Official Languages and the Prime Minister could easily call another election and that would kill this bill. So I hope we can move swiftly to third reading. Thank you.